Hello everybody, welcome to the Kansas City Barbecue Cooking Channel. Every week we're gonna teach you how to make authentic American barbecue in your own home, in your dacha, or your outdoor barbecue event. My name is Jerry Byers, and I have over 30 years of cooking experience. I'm originally from San Diego and Kansas City, but I live right here in St. Petersburg, and I have for the last five years. Over the last few years, I've been perfecting ways of taking American recipes and using Russian ingredients to create great, authentic American barbecue. So American hamburgers are probably the most popular item in the entire world. Today, we're gonna to show you how to make really tasty hamburgers in your own kitchen or your own backyard, as good as you can buy anywhere in all of St. Petersburg. In order to make really good hamburgers and really good barbecue in general, meat is really important. Hamburgers, not as much, but still, you wanna choose the right meat before you get started. My suggestion is make sure that you use just ground beef. Make sure it's fresh and moist. Don't get the mixtures of pork and beef, just stick to the beef. Then we'll mix it up and we'll add a few ingredients to make it really interesting and tasty. Today we're going to be preparing a variety of different American style hamburgers. And we're gonna go through the preparation, we're gonna go through the cooking, and we're going to talk about how is the best way to prepare it. But in order to get this all done, I need some help. And so I have my good friend, Andre, who's gonna join us and he's gonna walk us through some of these processes. How's it going? Fine. All right, so we're gonna cook some barbecue today, but uh, we're gonna focus on burgers. Okay. And so the first thing we need to do is we gotta prepare our ground beef. We're gonna add in our ingredients mm -hmm. and mix it all together. So I'm gonna go ahead and start, and then I'm gonna let you add some other things. Uh, first, we're gonna use Worcestershire sauce. Mm -hmm. We're just gonna add about three or four shakes, just like that. It's not a perfect measurement. It's just gonna add a little flavor to the beef. So now we have the Worcestershire, we'll add some egg. And we only want the egg whites. So we're going so to gonna separate, yeah? yeah. Yellows and we're gonna separate the yellows. Why are you doing it? Because the egg whites will add a little bit of firmness to the mm -hmm. meat so that when we make our hamburger patties, they'll actually stay. It's like together. a glue. Yeah, yeah. kinda of, it's kinda of like a glue. glue. Exactly. Glue. Absolutely. So here's another one. And so maybe I add some. Now that my hands are all gooey, you can go ahead and add some salt first. And about How 15 milliliters 15. of the salt. There you go, and spread that around. And then you want to add some onion powder and spice. Some of our special spices with onion powder here. And you want to go ahead and do about 10 milliliters. Yeah, that's good. All right, then we're going to add some garlic. Uh -huh. How much? Uh, go ahead and that's about 10 milliliters in there. You can just dump it oh, all inside. Oh, yeah. There you are. And then five milliliters of pepper. Oh. All right, there you go. Now, once we have it all mixed in there, we're just going to dig our hands in and we're going to try to spread it as evenly as possible through all the meat. Mm -hmm. So just imagine that you're mixing brains. Okay. Could I try? Absolutely. Oh. Get your hands in there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we'll leave that for a second just to let it sit and settle in. We'll wash our hands and then we're gonna make some hamburger patties. Okay. Now that we have uh, all mixed up, we're gonna take a wad and we're going to put it okay. in the bowl. You can grab some too. And you just pat it back and forth like this. Like snowballs? Like snowballs. 
except we're not no throwing the snowballs, <laughs> okay. okay? And we want these to be about 125 grams uh -huh. each. So we have our scale here. I'm going to go and put that on here. So mine's way overweight. So we're gonna take it, peel off a little, and then we're going to continue to make a ball. And I still think it's a little heavy, so. Mm -hmm. I think so. Try that. And, and now we're at 126. So, so we'll take it and you're so a little heavy still. And then once I have the right weight, I'm going to pat it out so that it's nice and round. And I want the edges to be rounded. Why? And this way, when we cook it, it doesn't fall uh -huh. to pieces. Some places will freeze their burgers after they make the patties in order to keep them together, uh, like McDonald's uh -huh. or other places. Um, but we prefer that uh, you make a fresh patty. And this is another thing the egg helps with. So mine's, again, a little bit fat there. And this is fun. You can always get your children to help out if you want uh, with this. I always enjoyed doing this when I was a child. It's fun stuff. Make hamburger patties and just lay them out nicely. Oh, back and forth, back and forth, like a game. Patty cake, patty cake. Right. There we go. Fantastic. Okay, so now that we have our burgers, Andre, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and make the garnishes that go on the buns. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and this is really simple, it's not very well complicated, but we have a red onion. We're just going to cut the edge off of each side of the red onion. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to take the outer part. Pretty so purple. So cut the top layer, yeah? Yeah, just the top layer off and then just peel that away. And, uh, and then we get the really, the pretty part of the onion. And uh, usually just peels back pretty easily. Mm -hmm. So set that there. And uh, Sherry came to visit us. Hello, Sherry. So, and then with our tomato, we're gonna cut the core out. Mm -hmm. And then we're just gonna cut these and thin slices. And ten. Thin slices is better because you don't want the tomato to be the signature item on the burger. Mm -hmm. You want the tomato to accent the burger, <laughs> not for the burger accent to the accent, the, yeah. accent the tomato. And then with our lettuce, just, just put it on. Yeah. Yeah, we're just going to cut the edges off here, mm -hmm. and we can set these to the side, but just cut the edges off. It's not very yummy. So I can put tomato yeah. on a pot? Yeah, I don't know, not on I the know. patties. We're just going to set those to the side, and we'll put those on a separate oh, okay. dish. So um, after, now that we have all of the, the edges cut off, then we'll put together our garnishes and show everybody what they look like after they're finished. Cooking American barbecue is all about time and temperature. You can prepare meat in hundreds of different ways but if your grill or your smoker isn't at the right temperature, or you don't have your timing correct, you can ruin all your hard work. This is why we prefer to use charcoal and wood chips instead of gas. Okay, so we're cooking burgers in Russian winter. So we have our grill all prepared. It's nice and hot. Let that slide back there. 
Now we're gonna add the, the burgers on the grill. And when we place them on here, we wanna lay them nice and easy. Remember, we didn't freeze these, so we have to treat them very delicately. Otherwise, they'll fall apart. And, and we want our burgers to try to stay nice and firm and you can hear them sizzling as we put it on the grill. With hamburgers, you want your grill to be nice and hot. And so it's okay to have a really hot grill with lots of charcoal underneath. You just have to keep an eye on them to make sure that they're not burning on the underside. So we have them on there right now. They're sizzling really good. We're gonna let them go. I'm gonna close the grill up so we keep some of that heat in because it is a little bit cold outside. So we'll close this up and we'll come back in a couple minutes to check on them. So we added some fresh charcoal on the right side here as our other charcoal starts to slow down. And one of the great things about uh, our Kansas City grill is because we have different uh, grates, we can add charcoal on one side while meat's cooking on the other. And so what we'll do is when we flip our burgers here in a minute, we're gonna add them onto the next side, and this is the hotter side. And then this side over here, since it's getting a little bit uh, less heat, we'll go ahead and uh, we're gonna throw our bacon that we're gonna cook to add on the burgers. We'll add that onto this side. So let's go ahead and turn our burgers over. And rotating the burgers is really important because it lets you know how far along they are in the cooking process. So I have my, uh, my tongs here. I'm just going to get them underneath the burger. I'm going to flip it directly over. And again, I'm treating these very delicately because I don't want my burgers to fall apart. And you can hear that sizzling sound. Wonderful beef. So now it's sizzling. We got it nice and hot. Again, we turned it just so that it's browned on the top. If you leave it on too long, it cooks too dark on one side and not dark enough on the other. All of our burgers are gonna be about medium well, which means just a thin line of pink in the center. We're not gonna cook them well done, uh, only because I think when you cook it well done, you lose a little bit of the flavor, but we don't want too much pink in the center. So we started with this side where it's nice and brown, what we're gonna do is let that cook for a few minutes on the other side, and then we're gonna rotate them 90 degrees. I'll show you that in a minute. But well, let's close this up, let that cook a little, and then we're gonna add our bacon on when we rotate these 90 degrees to the right. So let's shut this up a little, and Andre will bring us out some bacon to cook. All right, so we have our bacon, and I'm gonna open up the grill here, and check on our burgers. Let some of that smoke come out. We're gonna just grab some of the bacon here. Our grates are much closer together than many grills and we do this because we like the idea that food doesn't fall in between the grates like happens with many shashlik style grills, mongols, and uh, with many of the grills that have these grates that are too far apart. So we're just gonna throw the bacon on here it's okay if your bacon overlaps, lays on top of each other a little bit because it's going to shrink as it cooks, especially because it has quite a bit of fat. And that's okay. All right, so our burgers, we're just gonna pick them up and turn them 90 degrees, just a turn. I'm going to move those over to the right of the grill. And then the last step will be here. We're going to give it about a minute and a half. And the last step is we're just going to flip them over to the other side. And then while our bacon's cooking, we're going to add some cheese and uh, a little bit of sauce on a few of them. And you have a lot of different options with burgers. And this is the great thing about hamburgers is that we can do all kinds of creative stuff. We can add jalapenos and we can add sauces and we can add bacon and cheese. And we have a lot of options with burgers. And 
and you can just be creative. Do what you think is, um, is good for you. But uh, as long as you prepare your meat ahead of time and you prepare it well and your grill is set up correctly, uh, your burgers are gonna turn out really well. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some sauce on a few of the burgers and we're gonna add some cheese on them. So let's go ahead and rotate our burgers over. And you see that there's fire there. I understand that a lot of people worry about too much fire. With beef, the fire really is okay. And certainly with bacon, it's okay. The only time you have to worry about having so much flame is when you are cooking chicken. Chicken and pork, you don't want so much flame because uh, they'll just scald the meat. But uh, let's add some uh, cheese on a couple of our burgers here. We'll cut them in half. We'll add some cheese on, and then on some of our burgers, I have some of our Kansas City sweet and spicy sauce. And we're gonna add that on a few of the burgers. We'll do a few burgers without the sauce. And as our bacon is almost done, we'll add some bacon onto the buns as we serve the, the burgers inside. But uh, now our burgers have cheese melting on them. Our bacon is getting pretty crispy. I like, I prefer my bacon to be crispier. And so that's why we're, we're piling it up here, letting some of that, that grease just melt away. So we'll spread it out a little and get some good crispy bacon. So Andre is gonna bring the tray and then we're gonna pull these burgers off and put them on some buns. And with the buns and garnishes, they'll be ready to go, along with some of this crispy bacon in here. You don't want your cheese to start to bubble, but you do want it to be melted. We'll start okay. pulling off some of these burgers. And all of these are about 125 grams. And because we don't freeze them, they're not gonna have perfect size and shape like you would have at uh, McDonald's. But uh, this is the advantage of not freezing the meat is you're gonna get more flavor because you don't lose it in the freezing process. And you're gonna have a natural, natural look to it. And we'll try to drain some of that grease. Got some good crispy bacon. It smells fantastic. All right, so now that we got our bacon and our burgers all pulled off the grill, we can shut it down and head on in and eat some food. Divide. So we're back, all of our food's done. The burgers look great. So we have our burger with a little bit of sauce. We added on to the bacon and we served it with coleslaw. And this is our garnishes we made earlier. Uh, we serve most of our burgers on the sesame seed buns, which is pretty normal. Um, this one I added some jalapeno on, and on this one we used uh, wheat ciabatta bread. We added some jalapenos and some coleslaw as well, as well as bacon. You can do a lot of creative things with burgers. This is one of the fantastic things about burgers is, you know, however you really want it, adding cheese, adding different sauces, that's really up to you. Um, but it's one thing to remember is that American barbecue isn't just about hamburgers and hot dogs. There's a lot of things that we can do. And one of the great things about our channel is we're gonna show you some great authentic American recipes that you can share with your family and friends. So I hope you enjoyed everything that we learned today about making American hamburgers. And uh, please take some time, like our page, share it with your friends, and join us for our next episode. And we'll cover some more great, exciting recipes. Again, thanks for joining us. Just want to remind you, check out our website. We have our grills and our smokers are available there. You can take a look. We build these right here in St. Petersburg. 
We use all the technologies that we need to make all these great American recipes, uh, but they're made right here in Russia. Again, we also have our sauces, our spices and rubs that are on there you can take a look at, and even some outdoor activities and some games that we've imported from America that we think you might enjoy. So hope you'll check out the website and we'll see you next time.